there my friends and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be looking at a fixative spray by the company Loxley. So to begin with this fixative spray can be used on any medium, any dry medium, apparently it can be used with acrylics as well. So I'm just going to start off by testing it today with pastels. This was a set of pastels I'm just sampling here that was sent to me by Loxley Arts also. They're the Koi No soft pastels and I have already produced a video regarding these pastels and it's on my channel now. Okay, so all I'm going to do to begin with is just to lay out soft pastels in two layers. Uh, one strip will be covered the other strip will be sprayed with the fixative spray and we'll take it from there so having completed two strips of color i covered one strip up with a piece of paper and then began to spray an even coat quick even coat across the top colors and the can was about 12 inches away from the paper now this is the first time I've ever used this spray. It was a bit, um, it did have a strong odour so I do recommend you either using it outside or in a well ventilated area and it does say that on the can anyway. So here you can see I've waited till it's dried, it's about 10 or 15 minutes into the process, it's completely dry but it has coloured the paper. Now this is something to keep in mind, it has also darkened the colours, not much just a tiny bit. Here I went over the colours that had been sprayed and there was next to nothing lifting off on that cotton uh, swab. So and as you'll see later in the painting that I utilised the spray in, no colour lifts at all. It's uh, It adds a lovely texture to the pigment that's already been laid down and as you can see doesn't smudge no colour lifting at all so there'd be no fall off. I am going to try this product, this spray product in the future with different mediums and I'll keep you updated on my findings but at the moment this is just um, to do with pastel and the use of the fixative in, in a project. So here you can actually see the difference in tone. So the colours are going on really well as I said the fixative does um, give the pigment a lovely fresh tooth so it's as though the pigment isn't there at all it's as though you've got a nice fresh toothed paper back again and further pigments lay on top perfectly not a problem at all the pig the pigment of the pastel stuck really well um, yeah great all round thumbs up brilliant so we'll just hopefully whiz through this and I don't have to all bore you all to death by showing you uh, the application of 24 colours over a fixed area. So, But as you can see there's a, there is a change in colour. Once it's sprayed it is darker and just keep that in mind if you're going to be using a fixative spray um, with your work that it will darken colours as well as darkening the paper you're working on. You can use this to your advantage obviously if you want to uh, work in lighter layers knowing that the spray is going to take your colours that little bit darker that's something to keep in mind but it's always great to swatch these ideas out before using them on your actual artwork. So what I've done here I had a browse through my reference images that I've got and I literally have got thousands uh, that I've collected over the years because I, I do a lot of photography as well and I was fortunate enough a few years ago to photograph European lynx. So this is actually a close-up of an eye of a European lynx that I photographed myself. So all I did here was I just did a little quick sketch, quick sketch, sketch of what I actually wanted. Um, and then I narrowed down to just a square amount of the sketch and then drew it out again and this measures approximately six inches square and I thought that's a nice a nice size to sort of get us in the mood and see see what we can do with the pastel and the fixative spray. If I'm waffling today it's because I've only had one coffee so far and it's been a stressful few days. So off we go. So I'm using at the moment it's Clairefontaine pastel matte paper in white, laid down a graphite sketch, 
laid on with um, a pastel pencil, some darker pigment, and now I'm going on with pan pastel and a pan pastel soft tool. You can find all of the, um, I was going to say ingredients, you can find all the tools and the mediums that I'm using in the description below. Not ingredients, I guess they are ingredients of a, of a kind, but I don't like cooking, so let's not think of it as a recipe. Although I quite like that, an art recipe. Okay, so yeah, so we're just laying on some soft pastel. Now I'm keeping in mind now that when I've covered the whole surface of the area with a base coat, it's then that, I, that I'm going to want to apply an even coating of the fixative spray. Now with that in mind, I've already done the swatches. I've already seen that the the pigment goes darker and to what extent so I'm keeping that in mind now so I don't have to go really really dark with this layer if I don't want to because I know that the fixative spray once dry and you need to give it sort of 10 to 15 minutes drying time just to make sure it's completely fixed um, I know it's going to take all of the colours that I'm applying now and just take them that little bit darker. So if you're going to use a fixative spray, always keep this in mind. So when you're looking at your reference image, if you're working from a reference image um, to do a painting where you're going to be using fixative spray, you might want to lighten your reference image a little if you're working from that. If you've got, a, got it in your mind that you might forget at some point that the spray will take the painting darker, just keep that in mind while you're working. You might, that might be a bit of overkill, taking your reference image a little bit lighter because when you get this spray on, it's going to go darker and then you can use your original reference image. I don't know. It's whatever works for you. Art um, is a journey and we, if you're creating then you're on that journey with me and with everybody else who's a creator um, and everybody's journey is going to be different everybody's going to learn things differently no two people are the same we're all unique which is what fascinates me um, especially when I teach if I teach classes then everybody will be working well in some classes everybody will be working on the same project um, I'll be teaching the same techniques and skills um, but all the paintings will turn out so unique and it's just it really is fascinating um, and so just keep that in mind everything that I'm saying in these videos is how I would go about things what's in my mind while I'm working and all these techniques skills if you if you want to call them skills but techniques and life lessons on my art journey and um, just yeah use them and utilize them to enable you to create more uh, works and create better works and you can tweak the techniques to work for you so yeah keep that all in mind it's just this is just how I do things and there's there's always a thousand and one ways of getting to the same end so yeah this is just one of the ways that you can use this fixative it's just one of the ways how I would work and utilize it so again using the pan pastels building up this base coat layer as i said i don't want to go into in too dark because when they spray is put on it's going to go, go that little bit darker okay just applying a bit more and these soft tools if you've never seen them before that's just a plastic tool they come in different shapes the ends are, are shaped differently and they have removable um, little foam covers so they come in like a triangular shape as you can see here they come in a rounded filbert shape they come in a square shape and you just swap and change the tools as needed and swap and change the little foam covers as they wear out using a very smooth tooth paper these foam covers will last a long long time using something like Clairefontaine pastel mat or a sanded paper and the foam tips wear down relatively quickly Pan pastels, if you're not familiar with those, it's just um, the pigment is compounded into like a little compact, a plastic compact pan. They do seem quite expensive when, when you buy the pan pastels, but believe me, you really are getting your money's worth because they seem to last forever. I've, I've had them for over a year, I guess, a year and a half. I've used them a lot. And none of my pans have, have um, ran out yet. So the white's getting a little bit low, but nowhere near 
low enough for me to buy a new one yet or to ask uh, Pam Pastel for a new one. So as I said, the spray in this uh, video was sent to me by a company called Loxley Art along with a, a variety of things in a big box for me to try and sample. I am going to try this uh, spray with different mediums in the future. I'll try it with coloured pencil, I'll try it on top of acrylic and on top of acrylic inks um, and all different things. And as I get results coming through, I will make a little video and let you all know. So if so, if in the future, if it's something you want to purchase, you can go ahead. You know it works fine now with, with pastels. It's non-yellowing. It's not sticky or anything like that. It, it, the odour is quite strong, so make sure you're using it in a well-ventilated room or outside. Give it plenty of time to dry between coats. So at least 10 to 15 minutes. Nip and make yourself a cup of tea, cup of coffee, something like that. Um, make sure it's really, really dry before you work on top of it. I don't want you ruining any artworks that you're working on. And also swatch. So if you've not used it before, get a little sheet of paper similar to what you're going to be using on for your project. Put some pigment on there, whether it be pastel pencils, soft pastels, pastel sticks, anything like that. Um, cover half of it. There you go. I'm going on with a fixative spray now. Um, cover half of it and then you can see the difference in pigment uh, before spray and after spray. So there you go. Quite a good spray on there more than I put on those samples at the beginning because now I've got a feel for the spray I, I, I think I know what I'm doing with it now so I was quite happy putting quite a heavy spray on letting it dry 10-15 minutes and bingo nothing lifted at all nothing at all and I'm rubbing quite hard on that with my finger and nothing brilliant so now I know um, that it's not affected the pigments at all except just taking them a little bit darker. I didn't want to put base coats on the eyes because I, I felt I'd got more control just going straight on with the pencils once the base coats were fixed in place. But you can, you could have, you know, I could have put base coats onto the eye, then put spray on and then gone on top. But for me there was no point because I'm not going on to the eye with a soft pastel as such. I'm just going to stick with the pastel pencils for the eye. So no fall off whatsoever with pastel pencils on Clairefontaine pastel matte anyway. And that really is one of the things you're trying to prevent. Uh, using pastel, anybody that's used pastel knows that once you've finished your pastel painting you have to be careful with it. Uh, especially if you're working on papers with very little tooth or a furry textured paper like velour, you can get quite a bit of knockoff, a bit of dust settling on the mount once they're framed. Now that can be avoided by spraying with a good fixative. The thing is with some fixatives, well with all fixatives, I've not found one that doesn't, they do darken the pigments. That's just seems to come hand in hand with the fact that they're a fixative that can go over pastel. They're going to alter the look of the pigment somewhat. But they do apply um, some UV protection. This can, this Loxley fixative spray provides UV protection and that's a big thing. If you're working with watercolour for instance, you can spray this over watercolour and add the um, UV protection. So UV protection uh, helps to maintain and prolong the light fastness of colours. That's an easy way of looking at it. They're less likely to fade quickly. I'm going to try it over ink tents because ink tents when dry is light fast but when wet they haven't really don't haven't really got the light fast ratings for the pigments once they've once water's been added. So that is something I'll be playing with in the future. But as I said, I'll make a video when I've got some results and I'll let everybody else know. Huge, huge thank you to everybody who's been liking my videos, been sharing my videos, been subscribing. Brilliant. Just to let you know that when I reach 2,000 followers, I'm going to be having a giveaway. So if that's going to be of interest to you, make sure you've subscribed. 
if you want a bigger chance of winning you could get your friends to subscribe and then you claim the prize if they win if they don't want it etc etc um your likes your shares um just you subscribing to me all helps my um, YouTube algorithms and you know once YouTube's happy with me I'm happy with myself you're bringing me such joy and I feel really blessed with all the lovely comments that you're leaving um, it's just been a complete utter joy this year hopefully by the end of this year I'll have grown my YouTube channel enough um, and I'm hopefully in time for Christmas I'll be launching a Patreon channel so if anybody's interested in getting some ideas through to me what you'd like to see on a Patreon channel just let me know it's something I've not done before um, and obviously all of this is being done for you so even if it just helps one person this video will have been worth making that's what's in the back of my mind obviously during Covid I've not been able to teach in person at all which is quite sad but hopefully towards the end of this year and really really hopefully next year I'll be back to um, running some courses even if it's just one or two courses a year. I'm very close here where I'm based in the UK to Chester Zoo and Nosley Safari Park and at both of those venues I've run workshops before so that's something that I'll be looking to do like I said, either later this year, um, if not, it will be next year. If that's something that interests you, then drop me a line or leave a comment in the comment boxes below. If you've got any mediums or subjects you'd like to see me cover also, pop it in the comments below. If you've got any questions, pop it in the comments below. Sounds like a broken record, pop it in the comments below. <laughs> I hope everybody's keeping well and safe and I hope you're all keeping creative and I love to hear about what you're working on as well so have you used this Loxley, Loxley fixative spray and if so I'd love to hear how you got on with it have you used any other fixative sprays and uh, have you got on with those at all or have they had any you know pros and cons and things like that I'd love to hear your uh, ideas Okay, so adding a little bit of highlight here. And as you can see, it's really, really bad practice, but I'm leaning my hand on my work. Now you might think, mm, Kerry, why is that bad practice? Well, the oils in your hands can leach out into your work if you're not careful. So normally I would lay a piece of glassine, which is um, um, like a thin butcher's paper. Uh, across the work and that stops you smudging any of your artwork under your hand and it prevents oils transferring from your skin to your to your work the thing is is this spray fix this pastel so well that I was moving my hand backwards and forwards across that work I kept looking because I want to tell you the truth I kept looking and my none had transferred onto my hand none at all it hadn't budged at all it didn't smudge it didn't rub off nothing so that fixative does what it says on the tin it fixed the pastel in place i was over the moon i was grinning like a cheshire cat Bri a brilliant fixative and um I've had a look at the prices and it's a lot more uh, pocket friendly than other brands we'll just put it that way for now so I've laid down some base coats on the eyes. I wanted to get that sort of golden glow. Now this is a lynx, remember it. So it's um, not a cheetah, not a lion, not a puma or anything like that. It, it is a lynx, a European lynx. But their eyes are just as fascinating as the big cats we all think of. You know, you think somebody says to you, um, name a big cat who's got lovely eyes. People go lions, cheetahs, leopards, snow leopards. They'd probably go, you know, for those Jaguar maybe. Nobody thinks of a lynx or a bobcat and things like that. But when you look at their eyes, ooh, mesmerising. Really, really are beautiful. So I wanted to get that golden glow that was in this individual's eyes. Um, and just building up some soft base layers that can be blended out um, just gave it that pop. 
obviously this is a really really simple project I didn't take too much time over it I think there was footage wise there was about four hours footage but remember that during that four hours footage I was drinking copious amounts of coffee and listening to podcasts or something on YouTube so I wasn't working at my fastest speed because I was just yeah relaxing um as you can see now we've, we've been laying on some whites and now we're going on with some creams and I'm using a mixture of pencils at this point so if you remember all the base coats soft pastel base coats they were all applied with the pan pastel you could have applied those with pastel pencils it doesn't matter as long as you get your base coats down um, now applying the detail I like a finer um, style of detail so I like to use pastel pencils and I'm using a mixture I'm using uh, let's have a look Clairefontaine pastel matte paper I'm using Stabilo Carbothello pencils that's what I'm using right at this very minute um, in the pro in this process I'm also using pit pastels and I'm also using Derwent pastels and I may have used Caran d'Ache pastel pencils as well but the footage um, has been edited out it would have been like more of the same more of the same more of the same and it can get a little bit not boring to uh, work on and produce but it can be a little bit boring to watch so I have edited a bit out means this this video really is to tell you about this uh, wonderful spray from Loxley Art more so than a tutorial although I'm hoping you are going to be learning something by watching how I to uh, produce an eye and some fur texture in pastel so no straight lines in nature especially when it comes to fur feathers scales skins things like that so remember when you're doing fur keep your eye on your reference image and um, when you're doing fur you've got to be noticing the length of the fur and the direction in which the hairs are falling or growing so I try and put a little bit of a curve in each hair and also as long as they're moving in the same direction you can mix it up a bit and I like to put it so not quite I don't know how to explain it. it's like a lattice I guess a lattice effect but I can see through to the pigments that have been laid down underneath so when you put in your the hairs on top of your base coat layers that have now been fixed don't put so many hairs in that it's going to cover up all of your base coat layer because then it was a waste of time putting your base coat layer in to begin with so what I've done here base coat layer fixative guard hairs or whatever you want to call them top hairs going on in whites and creams and now I'm going on going in that sort of a charcoal charcoal brown oh, that's a Derwent pencil pastel pencil and I'm just picking out a few of the gaps between the hairs not all of them because I still want to be able to see the base coat that's underneath now this is one technique that I like to use so I'm just picking out a few of the different shapes that are happen to come about in between the hairs and also I'll use other colors like oranges and yellows um, golden ochres things like that and I will glaze the whites and the cream hairs that I've applied and glazing literally means you're just tinting a colour into white or cream or any other colour as long as it shows up so you can see that little bit of uh, this is a carbothello pencil just going on and I'm just slightly tinting the, the white hairs the cream hairs that I've already put down that's called glazing so you're just glazing a colour over a lighter colour and these are all things that just be relaxed about your artwork um, I've probably got a mug of coffee in one hand and it's just you know nothing's too precious I guess use your materials and enjoy them and if you're struggling on something don't think of it as a struggle think of it as just part of this learning curve if you're creating um, artworks drawings sketches paintings sculptures anything you're on an artistic journey and 
it's a never ending learning curve and that's what that's what sort of makes me so excited when I see other people learning and myself too we're all learning all of the time um, so don't be disheartened if you do anything that you don't like you've not made a mistake as such you've just learnt how to not do something so enjoy the process enjoy the learning process if needs be keep a notebook next to you so you can write down I don't know uh, when I mixed this colour and this colour it gave me this colour didn't like it wouldn't do that again and it's just a note to look at in the future um, if you put yellow next to black in paints you get green mm, you might not want green in a painting things like that just to make an, a, a note because sometimes mental notes aren't always at the front of our minds um, people have had a stressful time with covid so think you know thinking of things like that so artwork and things aren't always at the front of people's minds they don't have to be you can have a little notebook with things just get um, jotted down in there so if you're going to think you're going to forget something just make a little note and it can be quite funny to look at in the future too if you keep those little notes and little sketches never get rid of your old work look back on them no matter how rough they look to what you're producing now be proud of them because without those sketches without those drawings without those paintings you wouldn't be producing the things you're able to produce now so pat yourself on the back for everything you've done in the past don't throw anything in the bin keep it all in a folder photograph it critique your work and you will progress and you can look back and be thankful of the things you didn't know how to do at that time but I'm pretty sure that you'll be able to do things now that you couldn't do then right I'm waffling today I've got I'm looking at a cup of coffee but I'm not reaching for it yet so still we're building dark to light now that's wonderful isn't it with pastels that we can work light to dark or dark to light a bit like acrylics and oils you've got that little bit of freedom which you haven't got with watercolors so by building up the base coats popping on the fixative and then I can build upon the base coat coloration a little bit more make it a little bit more intense if I wanted to with like I did with this rusty red and then the creams just sit straight on top and as I said excuse me the fixative spray really did fix the pastel and it added tooth so if anything it ended up being slightly more textured after the spray than before which is a good thing uh, you can never have too much tooth when you're working in pastels and I will be trying it with coloured pencils as well for adding extra tooth to, to paper but you've got to keep in mind it's, it is going to alter the colour of the paper so now I'm just using a Caran Dash block uh, pastel block they're very hard and to the side of me I've got some very uh, fine sandpaper just rubbing the end of this pastel block off on the sandpaper just to make four straight sharp edges and then I can pop some uh, of the longer harsher thicker hairs on to the face and I did this not all over the face because less is more when you're adding white you don't want too much white but I just built up the texture uh, doing it like that and there we go pulling off the tape if you have problems pulling any um, washi tape off this is acid free washi tape heat it with a hair dryer it'll come off much easily much easier I should say so I think people like to see this where paper is peeled off and always peel away from your artwork and not towards it and there we have it that's a lynx eye in pastel on Clairefontaine pastel mat utilizing the wonderful Loxley fixative spray please hit like if you've enjoyed this video I really enjoyed being here with you today um, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed already and share my videos and share my channel with your friends who may be interested but don't spam them obviously that, that would be good and I look forward to seeing you all next week. I think it might be gouache, 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 whichever way you want to pronounce it. I think it might be that next week, but I'm not sure yet. 
So thumbs up, Loxley Fixative Spray is brilliant on pastel, does what it says on the tin, can't get better than that. Stay safe everybody, stay creative and I will see you all next week. Bye!